In the early days of the Brigham Young Academy, Principal Carl G. Mazur made a bold statement. He said that the school would one day be like a great banyan tree that would spread its branches and roots far and wide throughout the world. At the time, it seemed unlikely that this humble pioneer academy, too poor to pay its faculty, would even survive to see a new century. The university started as this little seed planted in the ground in downtown Provo in very stark times when you wondered if it would ever succeed. It's hard for us to imagine how small and how fragile it was at the beginning. We're told that when classes began in April 1876, there were 29 students. Since its founding in 1875, the Brigham Young Academy grows under the leadership of Principal Carl G. Mazur. On a January night in 1884, tragedy strikes the school. On January 27th, about 10 at night, the people suddenly see flames leaping out of the building. All of a sudden, we hear the fire bell. School bells are ringing, and people were screaming, fire, fire, rushing past the house. My father got seven goals. The cry of fire resounded through the town, found to my sorrow that the Brigham Young Academy was on fire and not enough water near to put it out. A futile attempt with a bucket brigade from the mill race on 2nd West did little to delay the complete destruction of the academy. There wasn't much they could do. Uh, they could run in and grab a few things. And this is devastating to Mazer personally, and it's devastating to the academy. One of the students, encountering Brother Mazer with his grief, said, oh, Brother Mazer, the academy is burned. Brother Mazer replied, no such thing. It's only the building. The academy still lives on. As the academy's only home lay in ruin, Mazur assures the students that the school will go on. With the help of Abraham Smoot and others, classes convened the next day. So the very next day, which is amazing to me, they opened classes. They started meeting in a warehouse, despite the fact that they had not much to offer the students, and they were able to keep it going. Even in those early days, they had a faith and a vision of what Brigham Young Academy could become. Every year, it was financial disaster. Every month, it was, we're not going to pay the bills. We're not going to be able to pay the faculty. We can't keep the lights on. As months of desperation turned to years, a discouraged Mazer, reduced to begging for bread for his family, reluctantly prepares to take a job in Salt Lake City. I am worn out and sick in spirit. And with all my love for this academy, I feel I owe it to my very life to accept any change that will promise me opportunities for permanent usefulness. Came home, told his wife and his daughter that they were going to move. He asked them to pack the household goods, and then they sat on the boxes for two days waiting for him to give the signal that they were going. Finally, his daughter worked up the courage to ask her dad, when are we leaving? He said, I had a dream last night. I had a vision of what this institution is and what it will be. I have changed my mind. I have had a dream. I have seen Temple Hill filled with buildings, great temples of learning, and I have decided to remain and do my part. Yes, my child, I have seen it all. He clearly had a vision that the academy would become a university and that the building that sat dormant would only be part of a large campus uh, in the years to come. It was a vision what had happened to the university, and it did. After eight years, the new building is completed as a labor of love for hundreds who have sacrificed and struggled to save the academy. Abraham O. Smoot, once a wealthy man, has given everything he has to the academy. There are legions, there are thousands of faithful people who've made this institution what it is. We owe those people so much who came here and stayed and sacrificed and served. We are the beneficiaries of the visions and the dreams, the labors and the sacrifices of all who have gone before us. God bless you, my dear friends. Be faithful, be true, be loyal to the great cause of which you are a part. <laughs>